I like being able to entertain if you can infuse it with positive messages and have a good impact on the world. Fantastic. But that should not be the objective. That is a very <laughs> strong public statement about a very hot button issue for Disney. I mean, if, I'm, if I'm carrying the Michael Jordan analogy here, that quote sounded a lot like Republicans buy sneakers too. What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Charles. Brian, how are you? How you doing? Good, 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 good. Getting into holiday season. Getting to theater whenever yeah. I can. Seen one excellent film. Seen one crazy film. Tell me the excellent film. Which, one, which one was this? The Killer. That film is awesome. I guess his monk style method of what must be done at whatever cost. I didn't get to finish seeing it, uh, but I, I think I left off him seeing the woman at the, at dinner. I don't. I, 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 oh, I think she was point. having dinner. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> I think that was up to, up to that point is what I, I, I saw. I had to see the rest of it. But up until that point, I wasn't really interested. Right? Interesting. Okay, I really liked how it was what did made. You... I liked how it was mm -hmm. made. I liked the fact that it was basically told from inside his mind. It was yeah. Basically, a narrated movie. Uh, I think it's mm -hmm. it's shot. I mean, everything Fincher shoots is very deliberate and very it's staged yes. really impressively. I, yes. you know, I kind of like the fact that it wasn't really a bloodbath. I kind of was expecting it to be more violent than it was. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a couple, you know, there's a couple of tussles in there, but but uh, no, I, I, yeah. I really enjoyed. it. I thought it moved really quick. Um, so I really enjoyed that one. Napoleon's the one that was crazy. That was the one yeah, where the battle yeah, scenes yeah. are awesome. And then, like, I, I, I swear Joaquin Phoenix was on something while he was making that. I just, when, I don't understand the take. When I heard that he didn't have no accent, and then I had to look for a clip where I heard him speak the dialogue, and he had no, I was like, I can't, I can't. I can't. You know what it reminds how do you, me? How do, how, how do you go into that thinking that you can just come in there, do no research, and portray a person? A historical figure. Yeah, you know, that had issues. A historical yeah. figure. <laughs> and, and that's why I feel, I, feel like, I feel like Vanessa Kirby actually you know, <clears throat> blew him off the screen, but I thought she was much more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, her take was, I thought, much more, at least in, like when she was on screen, I paid attention. But this reminded me, I was trying to think of other examples of this. And it's funny, I, I listened to a podcast recently talking about this movie, but like, you remember Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves? It reminded me a little of that. Where like, okay. I don't know what Kevin Costner was doing in that movie, but he wasn't <laughs> trying that hard. He yeah, was like, yeah, I got yeah. my Dances with Wolves Oscar. <laughs> I'm good. I can star any way I like, and you will show up. And that felt a little bit like this. Now, we know Joaquin's going to go all out for Joker, too. He's going to be singing. Yeah. He's going to be dancing. He's going to be doing whatever in that movie. But this yeah. one felt like he just kind of like either forgot that he had the assignment or took something a little too much before he started it and was like, uh-oh, I don't know what to I do here. would love to hear. This is directed by who? Ridley Scott, Ridley right? Scott, man. Gladiator. I would love runner. to hear yeah. his thoughts on this film Alien. and how it went down. You know, he's a legend. And, like, when he does yeah, this yeah. type of movie, he's usually in his bag. Like, these are usually yeah. his type of films. And, like yeah. I said, the battle scenes, worth it on the big screen. That alone was worth the price of admission. But And I would watch the four-hour cut if he releases it. Because the history would say Ridley Scott's director's cuts are better than the ones that he puts in theaters. But... You, I, I can't get over the performance. It's just, a, it's just like a mind blowing choice. Like, how did you yeah. come up with this? Yeah. He it's has one two of those, Oscars. He has two yeah. Oscars. Like, you know. Yeah. But let's get to the uh, topic of discussion yeah. that we wanted Speak, to talk about, Brian. Speaking of legendary figures making baffling choices these days. Yeah, let's good segue. Uh, Mr. Bob Iger, in his comeback, Brian, you you made a, 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 a very accurate analogy. I'll let you state it later. But it sort of baffled me when he said this, when 
I read the article and I spoke to Tracy, Fre Freddie, and, and I spoke to you. That seemed to be the line that everyone was pointing towards. And it was sort of brushed off in the article. It was just mentioned a couple of times, right? In that one segment, and then it was everything else. And I was, and, and you said it, and I let you express what you feel about this statement, Brian. But I was thinking about all the things that we said, Brian, about Nia DaCosta, the director of the Marvels, and how she sort of just bounced right after it was done. She didn't even stick around for post-production, it seems, right? Mm -hmm. That right there is an indication of things didn't really things didn't really go well no. uh, in, in, in that relationship and in, in that work on you know, those working conditions that Marvel, you know, has for its movies, Brian. What did you think of the comments he made? And it's crazy. Read the read the. If you guys can find the article, I'll try to find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but go ahead. Take 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 it over. Yeah, look. The analogy I made is: Is Bob Iger Michael Jordan in a wizard's uniform? This is a CEO whose legacy, when he left the first time, was generally regarded as an all-time great. And his successor, the, the, the narrative that's been going around is his successor, Bob Chapek, takes over, didn't have Iger's touch, leaned into the wrong things at the wrong time, ran Disney aground, and so Iger takes the jersey out of the rafters and he comes back as the, the heroic returning CEO. Yeah. But it's kind of not been like the 90s Bulls since he came back. Because first off, he puts his foot in his mouth during the strike in some just bizarre comments that clearly hurt that negotiating process. And then here this past week, appearing at the New York Times Deal Summit, he basically went off on the state of Disney. But... I kind of disagreed with about 90% of what he said, and I didn't even understand what he was talking about. <laughs> so, but let's start with what you're talking about. We'll get to a number of quotes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He blamed the failure of the Marvels at the box office on the fact that because it was filmed during COVID, it prevented the studio from having enough day-to-day -day supervision of the movie that was made. I, listen, I, I don't know, man. That, that comment... Now, remember, as you said, Nia DaCosta leaving before post-production done. Nia DaCosta publicly saying, this is Kevin's movie. I need to take a back seat. But I, that sounds like supervision to me. Yeah. What I missed in that comment, it's Kevin's yeah. movie. I need to take a back seat. So I'm not driving, even though I'm the director. That is the director saying I was overly supervised. And now you got the CEO of the company saying about the first female African American director of a Marvel movie, there wasn't supervision enough. And that's why the movie failed. Pablo comments fishy. That's crazy, yo. Com that pop that comment is fishy because last I checked, this was not the only Marvel movie that filmed during COVID. Because haven't we been talking about them putting out too much content? What years was that content made? Did we just skip over from? Did we get we snap yeah. we blip that away? Twenty nineteen to twenty twenty four. Yeah. There were plenty of other projects being made during COVID. Plenty of projects that had. The Marvel formula and machine working around them, the normal types of supervision. You telling me this project had none? Why are we singling this out? We're singling it out because it failed commercially. But would he and say this drawing, about yeah, James? Yeah. I mean, would he say this about James Gunn and Guardian Three? Would he say this about John Favreau? Would he say this about the Russos in the same situation? I mean, heck, even Ryan Coogler, who put out a very successful sequel that was filmed during COVID that lost its lead actor. I don't know, man. It it looks a little like they're singling out a certain situation. And I, I just, yeah. I, I just, I don't know, man. It's it's It just didn't sit right with me when he said it. Because it, it, it yeah. is to me, 
inaccurate for the reasons I just said. They filmed a ton of things during COVID, all of which had ve- lots of supervision, and, as we know. And, and they want to point to that being the reason. This is why I say Mahershala. <laughs> Get out. Get out. You have John Macaron, you cannot be serious that that's your appraisal of the situation as the CEO of the company. But then he kind of doubles down and he takes it even further and then said something equally nonsensical. He Bob Iger said, quote, we made too many sequels. Too many sequels. Yes. Said that, but well, some 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 deservedly were were, 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 were were there has were, to be a good yeah. reason to make them. Often the story is not as strong in the original story. That can be a problem. It just has to have a reason, a reason to make yes. it beyond commerce. There has to be an artistic reason, and we've made too many. Now, this also felt like a backhanded shot at the Marvels, mm-hmm. because let's be fair, Bob. What is the sequel you greenlit? that you realistically would not have said yes to. Name it. Name it. Name me the Marvel movie with the money you were banking that you would have looked everyone in the room in the eye and said, no sequel to. I will answer that for you. None of them. Captain Marvel made a billion one. You're just going to look around and say, we're not going to do a sequel? Yeah. And by yeah. the way, it was five years later. It's not like you yeah. released it six months after. Was no yeah, Matrix yeah. Revolutions problem here. <laughs> like, what was the sequel that you said? No, Black Panther, no sequel? Come on. Yeah. Doctor Strange, no sequel? That almost made a billion dollars. That was a flawed movie that made it. Thor was coming off its best outing. You're going to say no to that? Yeah. Come Nobody on, man. That's, no to sequels. that's crap. <laughs> Nobody is. was saying no to sequels. It's hypocrisy. But, He's but, not but, wrong but. about making too many movies. Correct. But don't and claim, the, and, and, the, and there being a reason to make it, yes. Yeah, but don't claim that you weren't going to do it with the money that was involved. Yeah. Of course, you were going to name one studio that has turned down a sequel to movies that were making that kind of money. Yeah, yo, know, you have money to just do whatever, and you did whatever. But now that's come, come back to bite you because now you got a whole bunch of people who have a whole bunch of a, of a lot to say with regards to what they want to do. And you get, then you get the she hoax then you get the, the, the atrocity that was going to be Daredevil. You get all these other things that nobody cares about. Like, who gives a damn about the Young Avengers? I'm sorry, nobody. Yeah, because the reality is, if they did, the audiences for things like Ms. Marvel would have been bigger. That's just, that's just fact. You have data. Listen, guys. And I like them on the show. I just, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The numbers but, are what they are. Yeah. In a different appearance, I think it was with Good Morning America, Michael Strahan, which at ABC's Disney Channel. You know what Bob Iger told them? He's like, I'll let you in on a secret of what we're making. And you know what he said the secret was? Frozen 3 and Frozen 4. <laughs> sequel. What did you just say about sequels? What did you just say about sequels? I'm sure you don't you, got a... You, you can't have a story for Frozen 4. You just can't Frozen have it. 4? <laughs> like... <laughs> but the... The, almost all the movies that Marvel's made didn't even have a third <laughs> act or second act. So you, I'm sure they don't have it. Come on. Frozen Come 4, on. Olaf's Revenge. Like, what, what are we doing? <laughs> like, what are we doing? So this is why when you say this stuff, I can't take you seriously. Because yeah. the, the facts don't align with what you're talking about. He did say two things that I think are notable and interesting. Number one, he said his number one priority is turning around Marvel Studios. That is interesting to me. I don't know exactly what that means, but if the CEO of the company says with his entire corporation, his number one priority is fixing Marvel, that means things are going to change. That I'm interested in. Why is it a number one priority, Brian? Very simply. He, how many films and how much money you made? They were averaging a billion dollars a film over almost 30 movies craziness and I've been amazed at that feat ever since we saw the trend of that happening each time out by the way congratulations to Colonel Hayes high school for winning a, a, a state championship something that has never been done by a, a city team and, and so congratulations to them they just won today 
And so I just want to give a shout out to them. But Brian, when you're make when you're averaging billions of dollars, a billion dollars a movie, and it's it's just the uh, the amount of money that, that that was coming in for these movies, Brian. There can't be any other priority because nothing has bring. This is your top earner here. You got to take care of him. This is like. Let's pretend this is the, the, the you know, uh, organization, right? Not a criminal organization, but hey, <laughs> you got your top earner that you listen to. With, and if, if things ain't going, if something went wrong with that stream, you got to find out what's going on because that's the money maker right there. Yep. So, yeah, that's his number one priority. What does that mean? Well, I'll Hopefully, tell you one thing it Brian, means. It translates well. into quality. I'll tell you, so yeah, there's been a lot of talk of this quality over quantity. Great. We've talked about a lot of things that need to be scrapped, changed. But then he says something else in this same deal book summit. And this is the one. We'll see if he backs this one up. Because I'm surprised there weren't protests outside the headquarters after he did this. Quote. Creators lost sight of what their number one objective needed to be. We have to entertain first. It's not about messages. We have entertained with values and with having a positive impact on the world in many ways. And Black Panther is a great example of that. I like being able to entertain if you can infuse it with positive messages and have a good impact on the world. Fantastic. But that should not be the objective that is a very <laughs> strong public statement about a very hot button issue for Disney that yeah. definitely has had an impact. I mean, if well, I'm, if I'm carrying the Michael Jordan analogy here, that quote sounded a lot like Republicans buy sneakers too. <laughs> 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 That's what that sounded like. Oh snap! But listen, we. What, I'm not telling you to agree with or disagree with it, but there's no question that Disney, more than any other studio, I believe, has become the lightning rod for this type of discussion. So the CEO is now pushing back at his own company and saying, "We need to change what we're putting in our features." That is easier said than done, and. I am fascinated to see what comes of this because, I mean, you thought the furor around, we'll talk about the other studio, canceling Batgirl was bad. <laughs> if they are going to overhaul this from the ground up after some of the things that they've done and some of the directions they've chosen to go in and the way they, like, I, 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 I don't know, man, that, that this could be, this could be very, very explosive to change this, I think. Reminded me of the great quote that is etched in my mind from A Train. I'm Michael Jordan, baby. I'm not Malcolm X. <laughs> hey, it's business, man. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do, but I'm you know, I'm here to be entertained and enjoy and have a good time and stuff. And and see some things that I thought I would never see in my lifetime, right? I'm not here to, certainly there are certain things that, you know, that inspire you to think about it and, and, and you have those moments, but it shouldn't be, it's, it's basically this, there's a time and a place for everything. Well, and, and, and we'll talk about the book, the book, Marvel, the rise of the end, the of the end, that, that talks a lot about this. It talks a lot about mm -hmm. how Marvel in particular evolved representation messaging value it, it talks a lot about how that evolved through the projects and how black panther and captain marvel one became sort of this catalyst for shifting gears in terms of how they went about doing it and it became as i said much more overt that's a quote in the book much more overt than we had been doing it before and so now bob Iger's kind of saying well that was about as much as i want to see of it in terms yeah. of the balance. That's kind of what he's saying in that quote. Yeah, yeah, so what yeah, does yeah. that look like now? When can you go, like, 
it's not as easy as he's making it sound. That's why I'm fascinated to see how this plays out. So Marvel number one priority, and he's saying entertainment over messaging. That's going to be interesting. Especially with the X-Men. You but let us, know in the, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this, of Bob Iger's comments regarding uh, the Marvels and its failure at the box office and the reason for it. Uh, let us know what the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe looks like. Uh, certainly it looks interesting. Uh, but I'm sure like many uh, of you, uh, like us, many of you out there are, ju are just looking to be entertained and seeing these characters come to life. Uh, but yeah, let us know in the comment section below and uh, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Report. The show goes on! Yeah!